I'm now going to show you a very quick uh, and easy way of importing parts from a simple spreadsheet. And it's, uh, it can be done in the standard and advanced versions of C-Electrical version 7 release 2. Uh, it's a great way of populating the type database with your information really quickly. So what I'm going to do st to begin with is actually create a new type database, an empty one. So I go into the command section, set type db, double click and I say create a new database. Type a name, custom parts, and click OK. And that's now being created. If I look on my list of components now, just refresh that list, I'll see it's completely empty. So now what I'm going to do is create a spreadsheet, and I've actually got one already made here, which has got a list of my parts in with the basic information. We do need to make sure that we've got the four basic fields of part number, the category or uh, goods group, description, and the manufacturer. So what we can now do with the spreadsheet is go into the functions and database. We have nothing in there at the moment, so it's completely empty. And we go straight to import and export, and we choose import from an Excel spreadsheet. We then need to tell the software where this spreadsheet is to import. We can locate it. We must tell it what type, whether it's the more recent extension, XLSX, which mine is, and we can then pick that. We then say where it imports from and to, the, the row numbers, and in this case I'm going to say it comes in from line number 2, and I'm going to go all the way down to line 364. Um, don't be sloppy with this, if you do put in there line 500 you'll end up having to click OK about 200 times to uh, get past each empty row. Next thing we need to match the main four columns to say which column um, goes with which on the import. So for this one, column A is the part number. I'll just pull this down a little bit. The manufacturer is actually in column D on mine, so I need to say it's column D. The goods group or type of component is then column B. And the last one, the... Um, the description, the main description, is column C. So I can do that. Now once you've put these in, you can also then start saying what the uh, additional information is. So I can actually say what the, um, what the date is that that was imported. I can just type in their date. And I have to know that on mine the date is actually all the way across here in column R. So I have a record of when this was imported. Um, you can also save these mappings, so you can add all the information in there, and I can go into load settings, and I can bring in one that I've done more recently. And I've got a list of the different columns in there. Now I've spent some time putting this together and put an X and a Y size on here, so I've got um, columns I and J, which have got the X and the Y size. Once you have the importing information, you can then click on import, and providing everything's OK, you should get an, a message saying that Okay, it's missing a particular column, uh, a row, which is fine, and then it's imported. So I can click on close, and I can see my information in there, with lists of information, data that I can make use of. So, just to test that, if I now go back into the drawing, I can refresh this list, or I can go into t symbols, and if I just pick something, maybe a transformer, if I place that in, just zoom in a bit, double click, and now if I search under type, and then perhaps I go into goods group, and I can go down and see if I can find one there for perhaps transformers. And I've got a list of descriptions there. Choose a transformer and click on OK. So I've now got the part number in there. If I go into graphical lists and I can just check, there your parts list simple, just generate that. And I can see some information coming in here, descriptions, and that's directly from the spreadsheet. If I've put the X and Y sizing on there, I can go into cabinets, create a new cabinet. Perhaps in my cabinets I can put perhaps a, uh, an enclosure on there, take a written one. Now, the same as before, I can go into functions and pick list. I can pick the object, and I can place it in there. If I put the X and Y sizing in there, then the actual dimensions on there should be correct. So I can go into between two lines and I can just double check 
and that's 95, which hopefully is correct.